and get started. All right, we're recording. So I'm going to take us in a unique direction, perhaps. I don't know if people have gone there, but I have been doing some pondering lately. I was hoping Gurney and Harriet would be here because they are an appropriate, or at least Gurney is an appropriate element of this. And what I want to discuss is, are we under the law? But I'm going to do it from a unique perspective. Are we under the law? And I like us old guys, they always uh, tell the joke about the guy, do uh, you wear boxers or briefs? And the answer is depends. Yes, you can laugh. But I want to add on it. It depends. Are we under the law? And I'm going to say that it depends. On what? Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. So I was in a prayer meeting in Binghamton, New York. Those of you who know the Duffies, I had to travel to Israel to meet this couple who had a ministry an hour south of us. And we were praying. It started out a prayer discussion of if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and I'll hear their land, heal their land. And so I didn't realize that just that morning, Lucy had been teaching at the Women's Glow, the, the whole same concept, but the if my people receives the then. And the concept is, I listen to a lot of people that quote that scripture, and then we start praying about all the things the sinners are doing, but it says, if my people who are called by my name humble self and pray. And if we turn from our wicked ways, then he'll hear from heaven. And what I realized was this, I was in Binghamton. I was in Binghamton, New York. I don't know if how many of you realize Binghamton, New York was a major hub for IBM. When I used to do consulting and visit Binghamton, it was the only city I've ever lived in, visited, watch TV in where they would have an advertisement on TV for Cessna airplanes. It was not a poor, poor city because IBM was the hub. And I thought about IBM. If you think about it, I don't know if you've ever done programming. I had to do some pro Fortran programming when I was in college in order to get through. And there's this statement, the if-then statement. Now, God was the originator of the if-then statement, but IBM took it to a new level. IBM's computers, if you were programming, you were doing if-then statements. If X equals five, then Y equals 10, that kind of thing. If this, then that. And yet the Bible is replete with if-then statements. And what we began to discuss and pray was the fact that the church, the ecclesia, of the believers love to claim and proclaim the then without considering the if. I won't go into it too much, but Terry Duffy went to the if then, but there is usually a but. God says, if this, then that, but, and the but is usually not a good thing. So we're not going to go there, but we're going to talk about the fact that the Bible says, if then, in many places, many of the thens, many, many, many of the promises are preceded by an if. And so I've been pondering Even before that meeting, and it's, or actually it was after that meeting, I was pondering uh, Galatians 5, and I started meditating on the gifts of the Spirit. And yet, if you look at, <laughs> if you look at Galatians 5, it says, but if you're led by the Spirit, then you're not under the law. 
And that's the depends. And suddenly it opened up to me and a, a whole section of thought. Because I used to talk to people, are you under the law? No, we're not under the law. Does that mean I can have sex with women my, with my wife, with outside of my wife? And we would get into all these circuitous discussions and we never really, really came to a good answer. And we never got to the point where I said, well, if I lost after a woman with my eyes, because <laughs> that's a new covenant. And so I realized it's not a matter of if I do this, am I outside the law? If if I'm outside of the law, does that gives me the freedom to do this? But if I'm led by the spirit, then I'm under the law. If I'm not under the law. So if I'm lift but by the spirit, I'm not of the law, the corollary, but if I'm pursuing the practicing the works of the flesh, then what? I won't inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, I am what? Under the law. And so what I want to talk about a little bit tonight and then leading us into prayer is this whole concept of if then. And a concept that maybe we're spending so much time declaring the then, claiming the then, saying then, 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 I'm not under the law, then, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many if-thens in the Bible. So I like to go back then. It says, if, if I walk by the Spirit, it won't gratify the desires the flex i never really I, i've heard that before but i never really thought about the con same concept if we're led by the spirit we won't fulfill the desires of our flesh and if we're led by the spirit we won't be under the law why because the spirit takes us in a different direction I always looked this before as uh, I'm a scientist. I love science. I like to think uh, I'm going to take a sidetrack now. Uh, probably five decades ago, maybe 49 years ago, I was in an oceanography class and we had to do a project. I've been thinking about this as I read the news lately. And because of my name, Tranchel, uh, we were discriminated against because they would always offer the ABCs to choose their topic ahead of us. And uh, so before it got to me, I was unable to choose um, submersibles. They were pretty cool submersibles back then, but lately we've been hearing about submersibles and I, I was forced to do something else and I did El Nino. So five decades ago, I was studying El Nino. If you're not reading the news about heat, climate change at El Nino, go take a look at it. But I'm a scientist. I like, I always looked at Galatians 5 as like a litmus paper. You take litmus paper, you dip it in a liquid, it tells you is it an acid or a base. Galatians 5 says, here are the works of the flesh, and here are the works of the spirit. It's like a litmus test, but what it, I'm starting to realize maybe it's a litmus test of what we're following and where we're going, what direction we're going. I can tell you that I started pondering and meditating on the fruit of the spirit because I was wondering how well I'm exhibiting the fruit of the spirit. And we won't go there because I don't have time to tell you how many failures I have. But my desire is to obey the spirit, to follow the spirit, to be led by the spirit. And I'm not talking, there's, there's, there are people who won't back out of their garage before the God tells them to put it into reverse. You know what I'm saying? And, and then they get to the stop sign. Okay, God, do I go left? Do I go right? 
there, there's a leading of the spirit, but the, 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 if I'm led by the spirit, ties in with the litmus test of the works of the flesh. If I'm led by the spirit, I'm not going to fulfill the works of the flesh. And before we get too far, before we get to the people that say, oh my gosh, am I lost or what? I like this, uh, I like this scripture because it says this. Um, the works of the flesh are obvious. I'm not going to go through them because it's obvious. Uh, if you're there, you can take a look at your litmus test. He says, those who live like this, some scriptures say those who practice these things, so I'm not saying that you never fall and follow the works of the flesh. But I don't practice them anymore. I remember people would always talk about Paul would say, the things that I like to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, I do. Uh, and people would say, well, that was before he was saved. And I would argue, maybe not, because before I was saved, things that were sin, they were things I didn't want to do. So we're going to be imperfect, but we want to follow the Spirit. We want to be led by the Spirit. And the if-thens of this scripture are so critical if we're led by the Spirit. We won't follow the works of the flesh and practice the works of the flesh. Live this way. But our heart is always to turn towards God. And so what I want to talk about a little bit tonight as we get into some prayers, this concept of if then, I think that's a critical thing that I'm starting to realize how important it is for the, the body of Messiah to say if first and then then. If we, if we will do the ifs, the ends will come. But if we don't do the if, we can't claim the then. And so I think it's, it's a critical time. I think as I look at the body of Messiah, there's too many people that are, that are, that are claiming the then. We're not under the law without doing the if of being led by the spirit. And I'm talking about kind of a biblical led by the spirit, not the, do I turn left or do I turn right today? I, I listened to a lot of people who were led by the spirit recently that what the spirit was leading them conflicted with the word and conflicted with reality. And so we want to be if, if, if we're led by the spirit, we want to be led by the spirit and we want to be following God and obeying God to the best of our ability. It's an interesting thing. If you are following the works of the flesh and you're not conflicted, check your heart and see where you are with the if. If you're doing the works of the flesh, if, the, if you're dipping that um, litmus test in there and saying, hmm, it's heading in this direction, maybe you need to check your heart. And, and I think, the reason I'm bringing this up in the one new man stuff is because I, I keep going back to scripture that says, if, if we're going to be Gentiles are going to be judging the Jews, then it's pride. How much of us, how, how much pride is there in the body of Messiah? I remember watching a video and I thought I was really inspired by it. It was from, uh, it was from the outpouring in the, in the uh, college town. And, and the guy said, what I'm hearing is radical humility. And I said, that's why I want radical humility. I'm not sure I've pursued it enough. I'm not sure that I've got there, but radical humility. Do you think that radical humility would cause us to be following the spirit? And I think so. So these are my thoughts. These are my ponderings. I like the if then. The, the fact that I was in Binghamton when it hit me and I even said it back then. Here we are in Binghamton. At the, at the time, there was a, there was a major hub of IBM before 
things kind of consolidated. The if then statement from the Bible. I wonder how much if, if then IBM was inspired by God. And yet God is the originator, originator of the if then statement. Hmm. And I think there's a direct tie to the one new man. If God eliminated enmity between Jew and Gentile, then we ought to be walking in a freedom from enmity. If there's enmity between Jews and Gentiles, as there seems to be in the Messiah uh, churches, ecclesia, then perhaps we need to go back to the leading of the Spirit away from enmity and towards the love and unity that we're looking at. So here's a question. Can two people walk together unless they're heading in the same direction? Bible says no. If we're all following the leading of the Spirit, Will there be unity? Every time I look at somebody and we disagree, somebody doesn't have the mind of Christ. Every time, so not every time, I, I, I don't want to, there, there are different roles and different positions for people, but if there's a direct conflict like one new man, versus replacement theology. One of us isn't heading in the right direction and one of us doesn't have the mind of Christ. Or as I like to say, one or both of us don't have the mind of Christ. But in this case, I think there's a, I think there's an element. I think we got pretty snubber. I like to, sometimes I like to do things that get people to think, but then it ends up being somber. I'm not trying to be somber here because I think there's hope, much hope for the body of Messiah because we got prayer points that we can pray into. And if we pray into them and God actually does them, which I believe God probably brought up this topic so we could, we can see some real cool breakthroughs. But before we get to that, I'd like to open it up to questions, suggestions, thoughts, anybody? I'll just say you're also, what you're saying is what's on my heart too, Paul. Hey man, stay thirsty, buddy. <laughs> All right, anybody thoughts? Anybody else? Okay, I'm going to uh, then start posting. I'm going to start posting my prayer points. My first prayer point is this. Believers will review and do. Oh, maybe I should probably do that. Do the if before they start proclaiming and claiming and proclaiming the then. All right. Anybody want to do that? I just put, I posted it in the chat. The body of believers would do and look at the ifs before they claim and proclaim the thens. Who wants to pray? Yeah, Father, so we humble ourselves because your narrative is so far superior than ours that your spirit can carry us into perfected uh, intercession in your throne room, God. So we don't want to be bold and arrogant, but humble ourselves and cry out, God, search us, Lord. If there is even the twinge or a splinter of wounded uh, behavior and position or perspective of one another, Lord, that we would enter the unity of your cleansing power, God, that it is by the blood that we come into your throne room of grace in time of need. We're always in need. That's why you are the ever-present help. So we 
lean and press into the communion awakening and say, God cleanses from everything that sets itself up against the knowledge of Christ, converge us and, and combine us into the eternal narrative, which is the rock that never changes. And let us hear from your heart, God, this evening, the delight of your, your well-doing, God, in my, amidst us, but over all the earth, for your glory's sake, we ask it. Mm. Amen. We press to pray into the difference between the child of God and the man of God, or the mm. woman of God. And uh, I think that there are, as Paul is showing some of these scriptures that sometimes people think are offset, that in fact are about different issues, that... Um, a person who knows God becomes his child. But there is also a, a walk of faith that the Lord takes me through and takes each of us through. And I, I even believe that the thorn in our side is something that the Lord keeps there. This is not something that the Lord says, oh yeah, that thorn, that's just for a little while. I, I believe that the thorn is there to remind us of who he is of our complete and total dependence upon him. So Father God, um, I thank you for the thorn in my side. Mm -hmm. I thank you for the place that I cannot get victory because it reminds me that it won't come without you. Um, I thank you, Lord, for the weakness that I have and that in that it reminds me that you alone can make me strong and that, that you are asking me to decrease, not to kick against the goads, but to pay attention to the things that you're doing to remind me of the places that I need to grow. Uh, Lord, uh, how can two walk together uh, if they are headed in different directions, as Paul says. And uh, for me to walk together with my wife, with my business associates, with the people with whom I do ministry, requires an obedience first to you and to your spirit. So Lord, I, I, like Paul, I think we all can claim to be the, the first among sinners, the greatest of sinners, because of the things that we know and that despite the things that we know that we stumble and that we'll even consciously choose to do things that we know are not of you, Lord, and that you remind us of the, the weakness that we have and our complete dependency on you. And that you're, if my people who are called by my name are first of all called to humble ourselves, then he will hear heaven so just being called a child just being called a people if you will uh, and being identified with you is not enough it requires a humility and lord i, I believe that that thorn is your way of keeping us humble so as painful as it is for me to face my shortcomings Lord, I thank you for that reminder of my complete dependency on you, Father. Amen. That's one of the things I was thinking about is grace, grace, grace. Uh, mercy is, is 
not getting what we deserve, but grace is a power to do what God wants us to do. So we thank you for the grace that helps us get through. Hallelujah. Diane, you got something? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just um, just want to read from Romans 8, verse 14, in the Passion Translation. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough but you have received the spirit of full acceptance enfolding you into the family of God. And you will never, never feel orphaned for as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father, for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us. And he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. So, Father, in this season, especially, I think, for those of us that are longtime believers and we've been walking this road for a long time and it gets weary. And sometimes our, we have faced things in, in this life that, um, that we have hardened places in our hearts, Lord. I just repent for, for me personally. Just I just pray, Lord, for your healing balm on everyone on this call and all believers, Lord, and just that humility and... Um, and healing of our hearts that have been that are just tired or have been um, you know facing life and the woundedness and the things that come at us in life um, and we get weary Lord but father in this season where you're shifting everything Lord that you would strengthen us and rise up within us as we're being put through this refining fire this wine press of sorts in this season to surrender it all and prepare our vessel for the more and and just yield it all just keep yielding it all lord um, you are doing it because and, and we say yes because we know um, that all of creation is waiting for us the mature sons and daughters to walk this out in a way like never before so we just thank you lord we pray for increased faith we pray for increased strength we need you, Lord. We need your courage, your wisdom. We need the fear of the Lord, and we need just that refreshing, refreshing, Father. So I just thank you um, that we say yes. Uh, we just say yes, Lord. And um, we yes. just say yes. Yes. Who is there? Uh, we say yes. Amen. All right, next one I want to get into is a little bit more uh, along the One New Man lines. Uh, I believe that enmity fits the description of the work of the flesh. And yet, Yeshua Jesus, when he created the One New Man, ended the enmity between Jew and Gentile. And yet, somehow, it still remains so... Uh, put in the uh, the chat the next prayer that believers will reject the enemy uh, enmity that the one new man is called to destroy. Any takers? Yes, I will. I had to look up, I know what enmity means, but I had to look up to get a, a clearer picture of what it means. And it, what it says is, is a mutual hostility. And Lord, I pray that you would take down that mutual hostility uh, between the Jew and the Gentile, Lord. Take, uh, remove all of the walls of hostility, remove the walls that hold us back from one another, Lord. Um, I know that there have been a few of us who have been reaching out but from the Gentile church, but I pray for an increase and in a flood of Christians that would uh, just pour out, pour out love and grace and help uh, to those, Lord, in prayer, in intercession. 
uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that there would be just an overwhelming flood of, of love and grace and want, and uh, reaching out in unity towards the Jewish community, Lord, such as, such as there's never been before. Remove those walls of, en of hostility, Lord. Remove those walls of enmity, oh God, that holds us back from one another, Lord. Mm. Amen. Amen. Certainly has been a hostility, and it's the whole Romans Time One One project, the hostility of the Jews towards the Gentiles. Gentiles towards the Jews. So who wants to uh, pick that out? Ramon, what about you? You want to pray into that? Sure. You know, um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time and we thank you for um, your message, Lord. It's a, it's a hard message, Lord. And as I was hearing our prayers, you know, Lord, I, I keep hearing the conditions of the heart. And there's four, you know, Bob had mentioned four things in um uh, in chronicles i mean he started with humble but there are four things it says humble pray seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and what i'm hearing lord is you know i i just i was turned to psalms you know because i feel like our conditions of our heart needs to be changed lord we ask lord that that whatever um whatever darkness um has deceived your the Jews and Gentiles, Lord, your family, Lord, that you remove it, you know. Lord, we um, speak your word. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxiety and see if there's any, any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting, Lord. We pray that prayer, Lord, that you would, Holy Spirit, lead us. Lead us, Holy Spirit. Lead us and search our hearts. And help us, Holy Spirit. We're asking for help. It's it's a, that's I feel like that that's the humbling that I we can come to your altar, Lord, and humble ourselves and ask, Lord, we need your help. We need to be totally dependent on the, your Holy Spirit guidance, Lord. We pray that for your sons and daughters, Lord, that we can come to your altar, bow down, Lord, bow down with humility. And seek you, Lord, and pray to you. Seek your face, Lord. And Lord, cast out any wickedness that are that are in your sons and daughters that have been, that has, we have, Lord, we have been, many of our, the nations have been defiled by the lies of the enemy. So Lord, we declare that those lies are being purged by the precious blood of your shore that have been purged, Lord. So Lord, help us come to that revelation, knowledge, and understanding, Lord. We pray that in the holy name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Can I just pray into something else with this? Sure. So just had a miraculous meeting with Grant and Holly up at when we were at the One New Man Leadership Conference. And I'm introducing the, this whole Romans 9 and 1 to go to nations. And uh, so, Lord, this is it's this is a um, this is just uh, a huge opportunity, Lord, and and it's a little intimidating. Where this is, a, it's kind of like the I like the the idea of this, like the Alpha Course for the One New Man. It's a big thing, Lord, and it's hard to put it in a, a little box, Lord. So I just speak a blessing over this meeting that's coming up. Um, we don't have a date yet, but. This meeting, Lord, to where it's going to open up to where we are in a hundred nations, Lord, and that there will be a breakthrough, um, however you want to do it, that you can do it, and we don't have to worry how it's all going to go down, but we just thank you, Lord, for Go To Nations, for their openness to hear and to take a stand um, for this one new man that destroyed the enmity, Lord, that you did that, and that we can help impart this message to the nations. Um, even bigger down the road, Lord, but that we would join um, and that that would just have a ripple effect in mm -hmm. ministering to 
Jewish people in the nations to um, opening doors in this region, which has a lot of the Messianic, um, just the unity of the church and the Messianic body. Um, Lord, we just speak life and a ripple effect over, over every project that, that is um, beginning with this message as it's growing globally and, and even on the tail of this Isaiah 62 fast, Lord, that there's a grace, there's an opening. And so we just fan that flame, Lord, and we just say, come, Holy Spirit, have your way uh, and, and take any concerns that we might have. That how are we going to do this, Lord? We, we're just little <laughs> and we don't even know how, but we just thank you that you can and you're doing it. So do your thing, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Thank you. Amen. Lord. Amen. Priscilla, you got something? Yeah. yeah. Well, I will tell you what I have surprised me. The word surprised me, but the, um, so let me just say it's, it's in a very embryonic stage. Let's put it that way. But <clears throat> what is striking my spirit is, uh, how do we, how do I describe this? Okay. Um, I, I was picturing, um, uh, Oh my gosh, I can't think of his name. Intratar. What's his first name? Anyway, on the Asher. stage. It, I'm sorry? Asher. Intrader. Yes, Asher Intrader. I'm sorry. I have it and it just left me. When he was standing um, on that day, as we know, on that day of Pentecost, and he was standing and he was standing with a brother, an Arab brother, and he says, when I, when I refer to one new man, this is what I, I am saying. It's an Arab and a Jew. Now, this might sound far out, but by extensions, even though we may be Gentile believers that we've accepted Messiah, we are adopted into his family. I mean, it's a Jewish expression. It's family. It's, it's who he is. It's, you can't separate them, the Jew and the Gentile. And I haven't really looked at it so much from the perspective of that Gentile, okay, let's just say, I am, I am in that Jewish, I am in there, I am in that, I am a Messianic. To minister to or to long for or to make any place for a Muslim. You know, I, I don't think of one new man coming together that way so much for the expressions that I'm a part of. I'm thinking of, want to connect with the Messianic congregation. I want to connect with my Jewish neighbor uh, you know, we're Americans, we're, you know, they're not Muslim. And so, like I said, it's in such an embryonic stage right now, Lord, but I've never seen it this way before. Lord, when you have a man like Asher Intrader standing on that stage and saying, this, this is one new man. I mean, the Arab, the, the Jew, because that, that's where it went back to. That's where it is. That's where it started. Am I wrong? I mean, I will take correction if I'm, I'm off on this. But, um, and we need all of it. I mean, we need all of it. We need the, the, the Project 9-11, wherever it's being taught in the church so that, you know, the church is no longer acting like we have been. Um, but this thing about the Muslim expression in the Gentile world, that we don't really have all of that here as much as they do over in Jerusalem. And it just struck me today. It, it probably makes no sense what I just said, but Father, I, I just, I just pray that we're going to be well rounded in our thinking and our and our thought processes about what you are saying and what you are thinking and how you blessed Ishmael, Lord, how you blessed the sons of Abraham, all of them, and Lord, that you're wanting them in one new man, you're wanting them saved, you're wanting them in one new man. It's not just the Jewish expression in one new man. Does that make sense? Yeah, to, to a degree, I, I think what Asher was talking about was Arabs and not necessarily Muslims. So I, I'm I sorry, Arabs. I did, I, so there I, is, I thought of the it, word Arabs. Yeah. Yes. So, um, but I, I agree. And, and I was kind of, I thought it was unique the way they, they identified Arabs separate from Gentiles. And I think that uh, mm -hmm. my sense has always been that Arabs are Gentiles. But given the dynamics of Israel, 
I think they are a unique Gentile, and I think that's why he was bringing that out. I think there are that are people that love the Jews and love the Gentiles and still hate the Arabs. And there, there's an element of of uh, we need to pray against the concept that you can't you can't love the Arabs and the Jews at the same time. So I I, I understand what you're saying. I think that's a that's an interesting and important component. So God, we do pray against the enmity between the Arabs and the Israelis, the Arabs and the Jews, and that that enmity would break down. Yes. Okay. Maureen, you have something? Oh, brother, I was just going to say as well that he was speaking about Arabs overall, because mm -hmm. the, the prayer, of course, is as they are meeting and encountering Yeshua or Isa as they know him, that they come into the faith, that they don't maintain their Muslim faith, yeah. but whether Arab or Persian, because those are two different people groups. And we sometimes in the States are ignorantly conflating those two, but Arabs and Persians come into the relationship with Yeshua. And that's why we are seeing one of the fastest growing churches now being Afghanistan, previously being spoken about as being Iran, um, because the first talk in scripture, and I'll see if I can't find that scripture before we end and put it in the chat, the actual first talk about being provoked to jealousy was from those who are of the house of Ishmael in the Old Testament. And so none of those are differentiated. It's all one new man. So Priscilla, your heart for that and what Asher and um, that brother is demonstrating, it's just a beautiful picture of what the Lord is doing in these end times. Because think about it, if the house of Ishmael is now the fastest growing believing community in the nation, how much more provoked to jealousy will Israel be? seeing who had been their lifelong quote-unquote um, adversaries believing who Yeshua is and them loving the Jews there are people now who are giving their lives for the love of the Jews coming out of Arab and, per um, and Persian nations because they have met Yeshua and mm -hmm. they know he is a Jew so it's just beautiful it wasn't crazy at all Priscilla and there's so much tracking there by the grace of God um, so even as we're praying about this, I saw someone put in the chat, Holy Spirit, lead your Jews and Gentiles in the way everlasting. And Father, we um, we add that differentiation, differentiation, if you will, not different in you because we're all created in your image, but in the context of your creation, in the context of your biblical chronology of uh, nations and ethnos, Jew. Arab and Persian and as well Gentile remove that enmity one first with you because in coming out of that enmity with you that mutual conflict as um, Audrey said the walls are torn down the walls are destroyed um, amongst and between one another I'm thinking about first John when he says how can you say that you love the Lord but hate your brother Right. Um, and so even as there are believers in each of these communities now, Lord, tear down those barriers, tear down even any um, spirit of suspicion that's keeping us siloed um, and bring us together so that there isn't that enmity between our communities. But we are coming together, provoking one another to jealousy and certainly provoking our Jewish neighbors to jealousy so that they might turn to you. We thank you for this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. So my uh, third prayer point is that the, the believers would uh, be led by the Spirit in a biblical way. And that we would, as the word says, be led by the Spirit, not under the law. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to pray into that? Mm -hmm. I was going to pick on you, Maverine, but uh, you already had something to say. If you're willing to join in and pray on this point, that's fine. Otherwise, we've got other people out here.
Well, Maverine del um, deliberates on that. You know, Maverine, I was just listening to you. And, you know, before we just dive in, you know, it's, it's so important that we recognize. And I know that um, I'm just reading um, Genesis because, you know, uh, 19, 21 verses. Uh, I'll start with verse um, 14. It really talks about the departure of, of Hagar and Ishmael, you know, and, you know, it really pained Abraham when that happened. And, you know, it, it's, you know, it says, then they departed and wander in the wilderness of Bathsheba. But later on, it says, you know, when um, they ran out of the water and God heard the voice of the lad, he heard Ishmael. Ishmael was somewhat suffering or crying. And in the angel of God called to Hagar of heaven and said to her, what ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where, where, where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad drink. And then in the final ver verse 20, it says, so God was with the lad. Lord, we just thank you that your spirit is with your sons and daughters. He was your spirit. You, you, your spirit led Hagar and Ishmael in the wilderness. Lord, you provided a well of living water, Lord. So, Lord, your spirit is life. Your spirit is living water, Lord. So if, as we have um, gone to those dry places, Lord, and we've been in those desolate places, but you are God that creates oases and rivers in those dry places the dry places that are filled by your the water of heaven the water of your holy spirit lord so we're trusting and holding on your promises because you are god of covenant you are faithful and true lord that your sons and daughters are being led by your holy spirit lord yes and that you're with them lord you said you was with the lad your son ishmael so we pray the same for our for 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 our Jewish brothers and sisters, for Isaac and all those descendants of Isaac as well, Lord, that you're with them, Lord, that your spirit leads them in truth. Amen. In the holy name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. 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 There's this song that just keeps uh, coming to my heart, and it's um, probably a well-known one, but um, it's, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Mm -hmm. tried and true mm -hmm. and that speaks to this third prayer point paul just being led by the holy spirit so there's the place and one of our sisters shared it from ephesians 2 16 that says as many as i are led by the spirit of god are the sons of god and there's this place that says that our spirit small s being led by the holy spirit makes us his sons it gives us the ability to even identify ourselves as, as the ecclesia, because unfortunately right now, many are, but aren't. And if we're led truly, if our spirit is led by the spirit of God, we don't have to so much worry about it being biblical, because that again has become relative and depending upon whose theology or doctrine you hear, but you're led by the Holy Spirit such that in the same way, that the Apostle Paul would know which way to go, which route to take, when it was Satan buffeting him and when it was the Lord saying, no, don't go, we'll be led in that same way. And that would lead us, will lead us into all spiritual truth is what scripture says. We'll be led into all spiritual truth. And so Father, we pray that um, as those who believe you, we not only believe in you because scripture also says that the demons believe that he exists but we believe you we take your word to be true we take your word for what it is we pray that those who believe you are deepened in our understanding so that we're believing the truth the way the truth and the life so that we're coming out of any syncretism gnosticism confusion and wrong theology but we're truly led by the spirit of God so that we are the sons of God. And as being the sons of God, we have the authority to walk in the reconciliation that will perpetuate the new, one new man. 
across every boundary, uh, tearing down enmity because we're walking in love and that enmity will not be able to stand in the presence of the love that is Christ. We thank you for all of this and ask that you just teach us, Lord God, and entrust us with deeper revelation than we've ever experienced before and that we stay on your path, the path that is narrow, the path that leads to you, the way everlasting, not going to the left or to the right, but trusting you to return us to the ancient paths. Go ye this way in it. We give you the glory and all the praise for all of these things and trust you, Lord, in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Christ, our Messiah, our mm -hmm. atonement. Amen. 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 Um, interesting. So what I, I do appreciate So being led by the Spirit, you, if you're led by the Spirit, you won't have enmity. Make sense? Uh, and we prayed about enmity. I want to go back to what Priscilla was talking about because I find it interesting. When we were in Nazareth with Aranya, uh, Arab believer, God said, you don't love me. Mm. Pretty shocking. This, this woman who was believer, functioning god said you don't love me and she said what do you mean god what do you mean how, how, how can you say i don't love you she he said you don't love my family and obviously she, god was speaking to her about the jews and then i remember one of the jewish believers that was with us took that to heart because she didn't love the family the arabs And so I want to take a little bit of extra time. I hadn't planned on this, but I think we want to take a little extra time. We always talk about the, the, the enmity, um, the one new man being the Jew and the Gentile. And, and as Priscilla pointed out, and as we saw on the Southern Steps, there's a unique element of the Arabs. And I'm sure the Persians, but the, the Arabs are the ones that are living in the land with, with Israel. But there, there tends to be among believers, uh, this this choice. You either love the Jews or you love the Arabs. And I think that's where God is saying to uh, Gentile believers and Jewish believers alike, if you don't love my Arab believers, you don't love me because you don't love my family. Wow. Yeah, I, I tell you, I've never seen it before because isn't the ultimate reconciliation between the descendants of Isaac and the descendants of Ishmael? I mean, ultimately, it goes that back far back. And and I when I think of one new man, I think of Ephesians 2, Messianic believers and Gentile believers, as in we're the church. They are, but the Arabs have no place in there. They're They're not even in my thinking. And it was about believers coming together, messianic believers coming together, Messiah. And I, I just, it wasn't even in my thinking. So I'm thinking, am I alone in this? It, it just hit me really hard today. So Father, I'm just asking you, like I said, embryonic. But Lord, this is where you want us to go. I believe this is one other place that we, we need to just broaden it. He goes, I'm, I'm out there. He goes, look up. I'm out there with this, or I'm with you. So, Father, thank you. When you're in Israel, that's when you come face to face with the fact that the Gentile is really, in that context, was an Arab. Mm -hmm. um, and this, when you go back in scriptures, you know, there was no Christian Gentile presence in Israel to speak of other than Arab. Of course, there were other nations, you know. But they 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 have been the predominant uh, group that calls themselves Gentile, and so in Israel it feels different when you're praying that prayer. It does. So Bob, why don't you pray into that that we would yeah. love the family of God, the yeah. whole family. Yeah, it it doesn't matter. And Scripture says it doesn't matter gender, it doesn't matter race, it doesn't matter ethnicity it doesn't matter how quote spiritual you are mm -hmm. that uh god has designed this in such a way that uh 
humbling and praying and, and seeking God's face is something that is required by everyone who breathes. There, are, there is no preference with God. He is not a respecter of a person's this, that, or whatever. And before him, we are dust. And, and so, uh, Father, I just thank you that, that you not only level the playing field, Father, you tamp it down and then you steamroll it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's completely flat. Amen. For the cross, Father God. And we all are in awe and we all are overcome by your presence and by your beauty and by your awesome love for us, mm. uh, despite our, uh, our failures, Lord, that you still love us the way a, a parent loves a child, even a misbehaving child, Lord, that that, that, that love never lacks. And, uh, and Lord, thank you for just... Uh, Join us your heart for your children, Father God, and, and showing us how you want us to grow hmm. to the image of yourself. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we didn't get a chance Amen. to pray into the fourth point is the, uh, the works of the flesh. And what I find is um, in my life and uh, uh, as things come to the surface, instead of being embarrassed about it and... Uh, shamed by it i say god you must have brought this to the surface to deal with and so so many people god we pray for those when things come to the surface that they would deal with it not yeah. run from it not hide from it not fear it but recognize that you're doing a work in our lives and we thank you for that issue in jesus name uh so lord we just thank you for this hour and we thank you for all that you're doing uh, i'm um as we lead into the next hour, I got to say this, there, there are people who look at other folks and compare themselves. And I, I'm so glad that God broke me of that because I would, I would feel so bad following Audrey and then leading into Terry and Barbie. I look at them and say, if, if I had to compare myself to their ability to sing, I would fall so far short. But God, you just made us different people. And you gave us different gifts. And Lord, we just want to honor the gift that uh, Terry and Barbie have and for this next hour. And we pray, Lord God, that you would uh, lead them and fulfill all of your purposes in and through them. In Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We turn it over oh, to you, you guys.